Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. We're here live broadcasting worldwide, back weeknights, 7 o'clock Central, InfoWars Nightly News. All right, I want to get into a whole plethora, cornucopia of other news today, but I want to commit to taking a lot of calls. So the callers have all been excellent. They've all asked excellent questions, but I want to just race through calls right now and get a good 15, 20 calls under our belt on Ebola, different angles you want to discuss. Then I want to get into all the other news and a big news blitz coming up at the bottom of the hour. When you hear somebody hang up, that's your chance to call in. I'd love to hear from you on this Monday edition, 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. We're going to go to Eric and then Nathan, Casey, Barbara, Kelly first. So be ready. I'm going to you. Eric in Connecticut, you're on the air. Hey, Alex, how are you doing? Good, brother. Thanks for calling. Yeah, uh, you know, everybody's dancing around the word conspiracy as far as Ebola goes. And you got to know if they're going to release something, they're not going to release it in the United States. They're going to release it in Africa. It's going to bring the crops up. And because the strain seems to be so powerful, it kind of leads itself to that. Also, I was told that Obama's real job was to take over Africa. And I was like, what? And they go, the resources there. And if you look where Ob uh, Ebola is cropping up, it's right where uh, a lot of the minerals, gold, uh, uh, and the three T's that go into electronics. You're right. All of the trace elements, all of the rare earth minerals. Thank you for the call. That's a great point. Africa, you, you can look at different numbers of what they claim has been discovered of minerals or natural gas, oil, trace elements, things they need for computer chips. But Africa conservatively, conservatively has as much resources as all the rest of the surface area of discovered resources. Africa. It just, just, it's just loaded. Loaded with everything. Loaded. And it's true, there is a policy that's come out in the Carnegie Endowment, come out from the UN, you can look it up, the plan to divide and conquer, to keep Africa on its knees, to, to, to keep it from being industrialized. That's in the Royal Commission, 1949, put out by His Royal Highness, the King of England. The policy to artificially suppress not just Africa, but the whole world. But then we see the policy writ large in Agenda 21 or Cloward and Piven. We see it repeated over and over again. That's serfdom. Feudalism is where you keep people poor as a tool of control, living at a subsistence level. I remember the New York Times two years ago. I, I, I woke up one morning and saw Paul Watson's headline. And it was dealing with... New York Times admits UN kills Africans for carbon tax. And then the New York Times article said, well, it is true, mercenaries working for the UN go in and kill everybody in the villages because they're forcing them off their ancestral land to have as an environmental set aside so that they're allowed to mine next door. Kind of like the Bundy Ranch is the environmental concession set aside. It's like in Austin. If you want to build, that's fine. You can build, but you've got to buy property somewhere else and set it aside that you won't build on it ever. It's an environmental easement. And I just read that with, with just calmly reporting. I have a London Guardian article from like 15 years ago where they just admitted, oh, the UN went in and killed 4,000 Burmese in Burma because the UN wanted the minerals the land was on for the UN. UN Development Fund or something. You just read this, and it shows how cheap life is. And everywhere, the CIA tries to put dictators in or oppressive regimes. They don't care if they're left-wing or right-wing. Carol Quigley wrote an 1,100-page book, Tragedy and Hope. He was a top insider, wrote the history of the New World Order for them, basically. Wrote the history of the Anglo-American Empire, another book he wrote. And I've read both books. I read most of Tragedy and Hope. I haven't read the whole thing. It's 1,100 pages. I skipped the boring stuff, but I probably read 800 pages of it. I, I, here's the thing. I said I'd go to phone calls. It's just overwhelming how public and open this conspiracy is. And so it lends itself that it's such a powerful strain of Ebola. It lends itself the timing. 
And it's in the season of crisis where the globalists have decided to pull out the stops on every front. So I'll ask the question again. Every major analyst, from the Secretary of Defense to the Ministry of Defense to you name it, is saying the whole world's starting to blow up. Obama, though, then plays the part of the good cop and goes, the world's never been safer. I brought stability. It's meant to confuse people. But undoubtedly, by every metric, cultural, financial, health-wise, the world is degenerating. No one can deny that. You've got some of the rich yuppies and people that are disconnected, have, a, have no idea what's going on. You've got some of the unwashed masses that are busy watching their football games all day. They are going to have a rude awakening how rough it is in the third world. If you have the dollar that's the world currency right now, and all other currencies are basically pegged to it, any currency of any serious value or, or wide usage, and you have a devaluation of 20%, 30% of the dollar the last few years conservatively, when, you, when half your income is spent on food or more, what happens when food prices go up 30%? You have a revolution because people are hungry. And so on the back of Africa and the Middle East and many areas of Asia and Eastern Europe not having enough food, Greece collapsing basically. Greeks are having to dump their kids out on the street in mass. Record numbers of homeless, not drunk homeless, real homeless, right next door to resorts with rich, yuppie Americans laying around in the sun enjoying themselves while Greeks are there serving them drinks when their kids don't have food enough to eat at home. <clears throat> I think that causes resentment. And it's not that it's bad to want to go to Greece and land on the beach. That at least brings some tourism and helps the country. It's that it's, 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 it's obscene. Like, I'm getting to the point where I realize I need to go out and buy things and it helps the economy and, uh, you know, that's, that's the, love our economy or hate our economy. That's what we've got is this consumer economy. I'm trying to develop a barter economy, a grassroots economy, but at the same time, it's not evil to own a nice house or have people that work for you. That's how the economy operates. But it becomes obscene at a certain point. When the whole world's collapsing and we're still sitting around having no idea what's going to happen once it gets here, and we have such a self-centered, yuppie society, can you imagine when hard times really hit America what it's going to be like? The answer is it's going to be hellish. It's going to be barbarous. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. When this empire goes down, which is it's designed to do and fold into the new global order, it is going to be spectacularly horrible. And that's why elites from Israel to the United States, from Germany to France, from England to Australia are buying armored redoubts in the middle of nowhere around other armored redoubts with private security forces already ready. Or they're moving to Switzerland or Luxembourg. And I said I'd go to your calls and I'm ranting. It's just that a caller points out the clear evidence that this Ebola thing stinks to high heaven. And then Obama, we, we break this down in, in the Obama deception. He was president-elect when we made it. It was released one month after he was in office, two months after. And we exposed that he will invade Africa, that they will turn loose radical Muslims in North Africa to invade the whole area, use that as a pretext to roll in, invade, and take over. And how they would then use bioweapons to depopulate and then people see it happen, they're like, how do you know this? Because once you know, you understand the modus operandi. And it's not that Obama himself is doing it. It's that he's the front man because you got to have a black face on it or the people resist it. The British Empire never went away 60 years ago. It learned to remove its flag, put in its corporate front people, and then the locals will put up with three, four times the abuse from a local guy that looks like them. Then they'll put up from some white queen on the money. You take the white queen off the money and you put a black guy on the money and the people put up whatever they want. Let's skip this network break as I said I go to your calls to gain that time back. Nathan in Kansas, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, I can, sir. Thanks for holding. Hey, thank you. Hey, I wanted to uh, rewind the clock a little bit, uh, going back to uh, early this year to January sometime. Alert, FEMA seeks Biodisposable 
for 1,000 hospital tents and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the tents, the, the gear, and also the uh, disposal, the dumpsters to get rid of it all. Do you remember that? I do vaguely remember that, and your point's really well taken. Your, your audio's a little low. Talk right into your phone and repeat that headline again. Okay, basically, um, I wanted, like I said, I wanted to, to uh, get back to uh, a story that came out earlier this year, and it said, alert, FEMA seeks biodisposal for 1,000 tent, uh, tent hospitals within 24-hour notice. I remember that. I think that that plays into the open borders and Ebola in some type of way. Well, they're constantly buying billions of bullets and armored vehicles and building emergency. They've been buying huge incinerators, Homeland Security, for hundreds of millions and placing them all over the country. They've been digging in like the end of the world's coming. And, and, and the government's running around scared to death acting like it's real. So I don't know what they've told them. I know it's in a lot of the open documentation. I mean, they have the Army training and the Marines to mow down whole cities, okay? In, in that, um, in that, I think they call it an RFI, uh, they were actually testing the responsiveness. You know, they were, they, were, they were testing the ability to put up these tent cities or these uh, hospital tents and the disposal. And uh, one, of the, one of the things with it was it was within a 24 to 40 hour, eight hour notice. And uh, in the article, it states in uh, 1,000 different locations throughout the United States. And, you know, they, they've already, uh, uh, what is it, the CDC or, or someone, I, I can't remember exactly, but they've set up uh, all these uh, little areas throughout the southern kind of United States spread out that kind of pretty much shadows where all the, uh, the immigrants are going. Do you remember that? Or? Yes, there it is. It's a FEMA accelerates preparations for pandemic. January 2014, uh, plans for mass graves confirmed, government surveying cemetery readiness for flu outbreak. That was on the FedBiz website. Uh, what was the exact headline? Because we've been trying to find it, and, and we're, but uh, I remember the article. It was about six months ago. Give me the exact headline again. There it is. No, no that's an older article Alert. from 2009. Go ahead. Alert. Alert. FEMA seeks biodisposal for 1,000 tent hospitals within 24-hour notice. That's it. Alert, alert. FEMA seeks. Uh, 1,000 tent hospitals within 24-hour notice. All right, we'll put that up on screen. Thank one you so much for pointing that out. That's why I say I've got all this background that I'm concerned with. There's just so much intel, so much data. Even if the threat isn't real, they're gearing up spending tens of billions on it like they never have before, uh, hardening facilities, you name it, while trying to start a civil war between the Tea Party and the police, which they will prime the pump with, with false flags. That's clear. Because the Tea Party is about as pro-cop as you're going to get. I mean, it, it, to a fault, it's ridiculous how much they grovel to the establishment. Uh, and I'm not attacking police either. I'm just saying it's ridiculous to claim the Tea Party is going to link up with Muslim extremists. The Tea Party is going to blow up police. Any cop out there who's got any brain cells knows that's propaganda. So the question is, how will they sell the attack? They will provide the patsies. So you can see different game plans they've got, and you can see it all starting to come to a big, disgusting head right now. Uh, anything else? Oh, uh, yeah, actually, one last thing. Um, you know, we've been talking about, uh, or you've been talking about uh, just being prepared and, you know, eating right and all that. And my thing is, uh, everybody needs to... Uh, to get the, the survival seeds, you know, little vaults and things like that. But before you do that, you need to actually grow the food. You need to actually start a garden and, and learn how to actually garden. I mean, if you're going to depend on a, a survival seed vault and you've never grown before, um, you, you're in for a, a surprise. I mean, you actually need to get your, your gardens going. And uh, it doesn't take much, and you can literally go out into your backyard and pick your dinner. I hear you, and I appreciate your call. I've got fruit trees and a garden we plant, an early spring garden, a summer garden, and a fall garden. And especially if you have children, it's so much fun. Even if you have a small backyard, it's pretty easy to do. And I totally agree with you. People need to get the survival seed banks, save one, but plant the other. Even if you live in a city, they'll have community gardens where you can go get a free plot and plant it there. And it's just so enjoyable to take your own watermelon home,
to take your own squash home, to take your own tomatoes home, to take your own peppers home. And if more people just get into it, big things have small beginnings, just like those seeds. Now is a perfect time to, to order a backup fall garden, winter garden. Before you know it, it'll be spring. We have the widest selection of non-GMO, high-quality organic seeds. We carry like eight different companies' seeds at the lowest prices at the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. And so that way you get a great... Uh, price on something that helps you and your family and funds this operation. So a win-win-win at the InfoWars Seed Center and InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, let's talk to Casey in Ohio. Thanks for holding. Hey, yeah, this is Casey in Oklahoma. Hey, I just want to bring up a point. You and Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs were talking last week, uh, I believe it was on the anniversary of September 11th. Yes. How Obama didn't even mention anything about the Christians being attacked and killed by uh, ISIS, ISIL, whatever the heck he wants to call them you know, for this week or for this hour. And uh, because it's because what is in charge and who is in charge of the shadow government that we don't see, that people are just totally oblivious to because of the statism that they're force-fed every day and they accept it as gospel. It is a Luciferian, satanic cabal that is in charge that has, does nothing and wants nothing more than to control us and be tyrannical over every aspect of our lives. I know you said you just want people to talk about Ebola, and stuff like that. You know, and earlier you had said something, what is it, uh, uh, the year of chaos? Or how did you say that? I forgot how, how you uh, had said that. It's just a season of chaos on every front. The people running world civilization are trying to wreck things on purpose. And we even have their own documents, like Agenda 21, where they admit it. Exactly, exactly. And see, it goes back to something that this isn't a Bible, that the disciples came to Jesus and asked him, what would be the signs of the times of the end of the world? Jesus told them there will be uh, wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. But he said something else after that that people forget. He said, then shall come the sorrows of sorrows such as never been seen before by man on the face of the earth. And this is that, that season of chaos that you're talking about. And these glitter bug 501c3 uh, preachers that get up there and, tell, and preach the rapture, you know, that we're going to be taken away and we're not going to have to suffer. Jesus said in the Bible, who are you that you should not suffer even as your master suffered? These people well, sure, Christ said they'll persecute you like they persecuted me. And I'm not here being a Pharisee saying I'm all high and mighty and I'm great. I pray, I mean, I pray privately. My, my issue is these name it and claim it prosperity preachers have been linked to the government and they're there purely trying to neutralize Christians so they won't be politically and culturally and spiritually involved, telling them everything's wonderful like opiate, like a drug, like a sleeping gas to put them into a trance. And it turns out they are clergy response team, certified government agents on record to pacify people. And let me tell you, I wouldn't want to be those preachers on Judgment Day because leading your flock into the one world government, telling them that everything's great and the and the worst things get wonderful, it means Jesus is around the corner. Uh, that just sounds like a total cop-out. Does anybody who's a Christian think that God is looking for uh, people like that? That God is testing us here to try to find people like that? Uh, it, it, that's why I'm so angry at these preachers. You can see these devil worshipers and other scum, they're out in the open. And I don't like them, but these sneaky government agents. In fact, guys, go to YouTube, type in clergy response team. It's a um, NBC news piece out of New Orleans where they have the preachers admitting we work for the government. So folks accept martial law. We broke that three years before with Pastor Butch Paul here on air before it was finally admitted on the news. But now they think we're so stupid. They admit that they've turned most of our preachers into actual government agents, which totally violates the First Amendment. The First Amendment says government isn't supposed to be involved, not that government has a jurisdiction over religion. God bless you. I appreciate your call. We're going to go to break and come back with Kelly, Barbara, Frago, Paul, and others. But before I do that, let's go out to break with this TV news piece on the clergy response team. Let's start it at the beginning. And then we'll go to break and come back. Reality in America. 
Some fear any nuclear, biological, or chemical attack on U.S. territory might trigger just that. And as KSLA News 12 Jeff Farrell discovered, the clergy would help the government with potentially their biggest problem, us. From my cold, dead hands. Charlton Heston's famous declaration captures a truly American value, the overarching desire to protect our freedoms. But gun confiscation is exactly what happened during the state of emergency following Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. Uh, Jeff, the primary thing that we say to anybody is let's cooperate and get this thing over with, and then we'll settle the differences once the crisis is over. Such clergy response teams would walk a tightrope between the needs of the government versus the wishes of the public. Oh. In a lot of cases, these clergy We're gonna come would back. be known in the neighborhoods. And, and, and again, they begin the report saying under martial law, the clergy response team will make you basically submit we're going to break down what these wolves will do during a disaster. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. And now you can protect yourself from corrupt cops with the InfoWars dash cam. It's your car's black box that records all that the driver sees and hears. And introducing the Block It Pocket. It renders your phone undetectable while protecting your private data and your health. Or take back your privacy and protect your personal information by getting your very own detractor cell phone pouch. So get incredibly high quality freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. We're here live broadcasting worldwide. Back weeknights, 7 o'clock Central. InfoWars Nightly News. All right. I want to get into a whole plethora, cornucopia of other news today. Release in the United States, release in Africa. Stand up, crops up. And because the strain seems to be so powerful, it kind of leads itself to that. Also, I was told that Obama's real job was to take over Africa. And I was like, what? And they go, the resources there. And if you look where Ob uh, Ebola is cropping up, it's right where uh, a lot of the minerals, gold. Uh, uh but I want to commit to taking a lot of calls. So the callers have all been excellent. They've all asked excellent questions. But I want to just race through calls right now and get a good 15, 20 calls under our belt on Ebola, different angles you want to discuss. Then I want to get into all the other news and a big news blitz coming up at the bottom of the hour. When you hear somebody hang up, that's your chance to call in. I'd love to hear from you on this Monday edition, 800-259-9231. And the three T's that go into electronics. You're right. All of the trace elements, all of the rare earth minerals. Thank you for the call. That's a great point. Africa, you can look at different numbers of what they claim has been discovered of minerals or natural gas, oil, trace elements, things they need for computer chips. But Africa conservatively could win 800-259-9231. We're going to go to Eric and then Nathan, Casey, Barbara, Kelly first. So be ready. I'm going to you. Eric in Connecticut, you're on the air. Hey, Alex, how you doing? Good, brother. Thanks for calling. Yeah, uh, you know, everybody's dancing around the word conspiracy as far as Ebola goes. And you got to know if they're going to release something, they're not going to.